welcome back to my channel and to this little series on the costs of moving to Italy and living as an expat. Sorry, last week I couldn't publish because my computer broke and had to be repaired. In part one, I discussed the one-off setup costs of moving to Italy, finding an apartment, showed you different rental prices across the country. In part two, I took you for an in-depth grocery shop and shared why I believe Italy offers so much cultural beauty for free. This episode, let's look at some of the possible monthly costs. I'm going to talk you through the following. Phone credit, Wi-Fi, uh, subscriptions, taxis, dinner out, gifts when you're invited into someone's home, flowers, gym, hairdresser, therapy. I thought this might be interesting for you uh, to look at how Italian cities compare globally with uh, a general cost of living. Now, I don't believe it's easy to come up with these figures with any accuracy, but it's interesting to note how many American cities, uh, the city of Sydney, Australia, Toronto, Canada, are all listed here before we see a single Italian city. Finally, there is Milan, but I know very few expats who move there uh, by choice unless you're transferred with a company. It's more likely you'd move to Florence or Rome if you were thinking of studying Italian, which I believe is the case for many of you. And, uh, and they're much, much further down. So anyway, I thought some of you might find this interesting. Okay, let's look at coffee, for example. If you consider going out for coffee and a pastry for breakfast or morning tea, Italy is one of the cheapest places, even in the most upmarket streets of Rome or Florence. Of course, I am a bit of a purist. I drink my coffee black and short. Uh, I grew up in quite a European home. I mean, we always had espresso, no froth, milk, sugar, nothing <laughs> diluting it. And an excellent espresso in a historic cafe with a view of magnificent architecture cost me as little as 80 centesimi, okay, just 80 cents. Freshly baked cornetti or croissants filled with quality chocolate or crema pasticcera costs only one euro. When I go back to Australia, even with the horrible exchange rate, which brings 80 cents up to $1.30, I could not find quality espresso anywhere, even in an airport kiosk for that amount. I suppose I do save a lot of money because I've never uh, drunk, I've never smoked, I've never done drugs. And also, uh, I grew up on quite a healthy diet, so I happily turn uh, a can of chickpeas for 60 cents into hummus and eat it with delicious baked vegetables or raw vegetables, which just cost me two euros. So the meal total is two euro 60, which is quite reasonable. I've never had a car, so I do save on parking, on petrol, on fines. I never use the metro, the um, the subway, even once in my whole, in all of my time living in Rome. I rarely use taxis. I go everywhere by bicycle or on foot. I recommend signing up to Trenitalia and also Italo, the train companies, because it's good to buy your tickets in advance and you'll be notified when they have sales and then you can buy tickets for domestic travel like a weekend trip up to Venice or down to the Amalfi Coast and you get really good prices this way. I've always paid a little bit more uh, for an apartment with soul, with some uh, visual beauty, because this is my office. It is my film and editing studio. It's where I invite clients. It's where I get inspiration because I work from home. Okay, let's look at your phone credit. Now, unless you have an Italian bank account, you won't be eligible for all the uh, yearly packages that offer really cheap rates. You'll have to choose the recharge option. You want to ask for una scheda or una sim telefonica ricaricabile. Ricaricabile. Most phone companies I've found in Italy don't allow recharges with a foreign card online, so be aware that you'll have to go into a store every month to recharge unless you can pay via a PayPal account. And everyone in Italy uses WhatsApp. Everyone, like even plumbers, if you have a plumber or someone come, or even, I mean, I think I even had like a gynecologist who was messaging me on WhatsApp and using little emoticons like, hey, 
how's everything going? <laughs> so yes, WhatsApp is um, is crucial if you if you live in Italy. I'm paying uh, 20 euro a month and that gives me calls and messages and data. I hate to speak on the phone. I, I rarely ever call. I mean, I, I, I mean, I speak to friends mostly on, on WhatsApp and when I'm on Wi-Fi. Keep in mind also that even if the apartment that you've rented says it has Wi-Fi, the walls are so thick uh, in, in so many of these old palazzi, so uh, often the signal is really bad, uh, and so you'll have to sort of toggle between, you know, one day you're using your Wi-Fi or one day you're using your phone data because it's just, it's just, this is how it is. <laughs> and of course, this is why you've moved here for all these beautiful palazzi with big, thick stone walls, so. What, what can you do? Also, I think it's nice too to, uh, uh, sometimes you want data because you want to go out and sit in the piazza and you, you know, maybe you have to check emails or something, but uh, you want to get out of the house and, and be uh, amongst it, it all. Um, next, Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi I find uh, per month and you want to get the super fast Wi-Fi and the reason is because you might be lonely a lot of nights or you might just be struggling or you might first move here and just think, oh my gosh, what have I done? Ah, and feel really alienated. And, or you're just speaking Italian all the time, all the time, all the time. And then you get home and perhaps you just like to watch a film in uh, lingua originale, in the original language. And so therefore I find it's, it's quite helpful to be able to stream uh, content because it sometimes it's just just makes you feel a little bit less homesick or a little bit it's just a nice escapism I talk to a lot of expats who say it's, it's so crazy all day speaking Italian or trying to understand Italian and then they come home and they just want to watch a nice film and feel ah oh. and in this case um, obviously you can't find you're not going to always be able to find uh, original language uh, content on your television so in that case you'd want to stream it or use YouTube or whatever so so you want super fast Wi-Fi and this costs uh, anywhere between 20 and 40 euro the super um, fast uh, Wi-Fi is takes a lot to get installed so when you arrive in a place of for example I've arrived in in places where they had really horribly slow Wi-Fi and I've said to the proprietario, the landlord, uh, I will, you know, go to the trouble of orchestrating getting the fibra put in, which is the, the super fast line. And often they'll be like, oh, no, no, no. But if you're willing to go to that trouble, uh, it's worth it because then, I mean, they're the quality of, of, of the value of their property goes up and so uh, it shouldn't and it shouldn't cost that much more it's actually just a, you've just got to order a new modem and and uh, and be at home and and for the guys to come and install it and all the rest of it so it's a bit of bother but it's it's worth trying to negotiate this with your landlord if you can also uh, generally most places uh, if you're renting include the Wi-Fi so uh, it depends on where you are but uh, it is fairly standard so you might get lucky and the Wi-Fi might just be included in your rent and this is great you can cross that off your list but I like to account for it because you know sometimes it's just not uh, for example the place I lived at in Rome I mean I could never upload my YouTube videos using the Wi-Fi it just wasn't fast enough and and so I was always having to use my phone data to upload videos so this is just something to take into consideration um, Netflix uh, you might have a Netflix account already, but if you perhaps you're living at home now and you're just using your parents' Netflix account, no, uh, you uh, want to consider things like Netflix or Audible. You know, do you want audiobooks? Try and think about uh, you know giving yourself a nice little luxury like this if you're going to be struggling or if you're going to be without a social life and and you might need as i said the comfort of uh, listening to an audiobook or listening to uh, or watching a, a a film you can choose which ones are applicable to you you might say oh no kylie uh, netflix is a is is a luxury fine but i've just what i want to do is 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 be able to give you this really comprehensive thorough list so that then there's no surprises and uh, as I said before you might find this whole experience quite uh, overwhelming and depressing and think oh my gosh it costs so much but actually if you do it with your own life living where you live now you'll 
equally be surprised because often we're not even really conscious of how much we're spending or how much we're wasting even no like so um maybe you're not maybe you're an excellent saver maybe you live quite frugally i don't know taxis now if you are female and you're uh alone uh i would and and you're also i don't know interested in in going out and and having these like one night a week or or i don't know a month or whatever uh having a really great night out where you've sort of out all night until 4 a.m or 5 a.m dancing going to a club going to a party whatever uh i would then recommend putting in your budget um uh, 10 euro so if you're living in the in the um in the, in the center, uh, putting aside 10 to 15 euro a week for a taxi home because uh, it's, not, it's not that dangerous, I find, in Italy. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of uh, problems with strange men following me home in all different countries, but in Italy, I felt particularly safe. That said, I just think this is money well spent. You can never be too safe uh, when it comes to going home early in the morning, like around 4 a.m. You just, for me, for example, this is a, a priority. If I have to, if I have to spend uh, 15 or 20 euro for that one Friday night or that one Saturday night where I'm coming home late from a party, there'll be many people probably giving you, offering to give you lifts, but uh, that also comes with complications. You know, then they might expect uh, un bacio or something for giving you un passaggio, uh, a lift. But uh, I prefer to be independent. So I will, oftentimes what I would do is I'd go, <laughs> I would actually go to the club on my bicycle and I would chain my bicycle to the front of the discoteca, to the club. And then I would cycle home in Stiletto Hills it's a it's an art but you can learn that too uh but uh if if you if you don't do that then yeah just just get a taxi it's always always best as particularly because you don't you will probably stick out as a foreigner and so then you could become a bit of a, a target and so yeah you just just want to invest in your safety always um if you're a male lucky you you don't have to have that cost Okay, being social, how much is it going to cost you to have friends in Italy uh, or have a social life? Uh, well, look, fortunately, the most wonderful thing is that eating out is rather inexpensive, e even in all the, the, the big cities. You can go to a trattoria, uh, which is a more sort of rustic uh, style restaurant, and the primi is where you want to go. The primi, okay, you have the primi and the secondi. The primi are the first course and the and secondi, second course, obviously. But the second course is like, you know, your meat and your roast and your fish and all the rest of it. The primi is pasta. You want to stay in that zone uh, because it's uh, most plates of pasta will cost between 8 and 12 euro, uh, which, is, which is quite good because they're always really really good quality and and quite decent servings and um i find unfortunately it can get difficult because then you'll go out with people and they'll be like oh let's get an antipasto and a primo and a secondo and dolce and vino and then it's it can it can all add up uh with this i find you just need to be quite honest with people and say uh, if they invite you out or whatever or if you're sitting there and ordering you say oh i've i've I'm on a bit of a budget and yeah, there's, there's no shame in saying that because ultimately uh, it can be a bit hard to, to negotiate and uh, or to, to work out in your own mind, can I afford to go out <laughs> tonight? And that's difficult. And in fact, in some of the times when I've been uh, particularly short on money, I mean, yeah, look, when I think about it, it actually makes me laugh because I think, oh, wow, it's, it's been so many, so many different periods of my, my life here in Italy. But for example, I remember times, several times, when I would pretend to be sick, like have a bit of a, oh, I'm, I'm fine, but I have a bit of a stomach uh, bug or whatever. And I would just say that so that I wouldn't have to partake in the meal because I wouldn't want to, because I didn't have enough money to uh do all of the courses or or even perhaps even one course but i wanted to go out and be social and then i thought oh i can't stay home so i would just pretend i would say oh well, i've got a bit of a stomach thing and then they would say oh are you sure and but um actually i would eat before i go out um but you know then they have this delicious food and and i would think oh i wish i could i wish i could be eating it too but you know this is just this is just some of the sacrifices you have to you you can make you don't have to make it but for me i uh yeah 
I guess I have this I have this attitude basically it's like not not much can get me down when it comes to to Italy even if it means going out for a dining out for a whole evening and and not uh, and not being able to eat. I mean, because that was just one period. And then when I finally found some more work, I, I got to a period where I was able to go out and I was able to even shout friends and say, hey, look, don't worry, because of, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shout you, I don't know, a round of drinks or something, which see, for me, it's always difficult because people always order so much wine and I don't drink. And then it's like, um, and then, I, you know, at the end of the night, it would just be this exorbitant bill. And I'd only had like, uh, I don't know, couple of fried zucchinis and <laughs> I, I'm not so into eating out in restaurants I really because the produce is so good here so even if you're in Italy it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be eating out in restaurants because I would go to the markets and buy such wonderful stuff or I would go and speak with my local butcher and get a lot of joy out of buying fresh, pro fresh produce and cooking it at home um, you think I'm crazy don't you? you think I'm crazy that I would go out and, and not eat but it's not, it's not like I was you know anorexic or starving myself or anything I just thought like I still want to be social but I'm I was poor in those periods so you know I just said you have to find a way you find a way to make it work and it's not forever when you're invited into someone's home initially it is uh, good manners to always arrive with a little gift something to thank them for their hospitality for offering you a free meal uh, it's it's very good to do these little um, things so I will put this into your budget because maybe you'll go to someone's house once a month so maybe put it as a monthly cost and I would say that spending mm, I would say 15 euro is uh, or 10 to 15 euro is, is a good uh, is a good reasonable average amount uh, so for 10 euro you can get a beautiful bunch of flowers uh, or you could get uh, for like if you get um, a Sorry, I'm thinking in Italian and then translating back to English. Um, but if you can get a tub of gelato, so uh, quite a common thing is to go to a beautiful gelateria and get uh, quattro gusti for flavors and for everyone, and then to arrive at a dinner party with that because then it's quite it's it's a nice gesture. And then if they already have a cake, you know they can also have the gelato on the side or they can keep it in their freezer for later so that's quite a nice a nice gift if you're not sure what type of flowers to give or what type of wine to give everyone loves gelato and this is a very easy and polite uh, token gift to arrive with also uh, you know with flowers I mean this is this is another thing um, I so for, for me, flowers are really like a, <laughs> something that, that give me a lot of strength, a lot of uh, joy. And, uh, and so I have flowers in my home every week. But anywhere I've lived in Italy, I tend to develop quite a good relationship with my florist. And then he'd always give me little uh, uh, discounts. And, and, and then, you know, if you go regularly anywhere, they'll, they'll, they'll end up giving you some sort of little discount and say, ah, oh, and this, no, it's not just because I'm a female. I mean, my, my parents, when they go and stay in places uh, for, for a month or something, then they often uh, develop the same rapport with people. I think anywhere you go back too frequently, they appreciate the loyalty. With flowers as well, it's, it's uh, you know, they can be quite cheap. I mean, really four euro for a bunch of flowers, uh, which is which is not so much, beautiful bunch of flowers for four euro. So uh, I think that this is uh, a little luxury that for, for a lot of people is is manageable. Uh, this is this is just an example week. It's not everyone's week. It is the week of uh, a lot of the foreigners that I knew when I lived in Rome and uh, when I lived in Florence. And these are people who worked really hard uh, in their own country to save up money so that they could afford to live in Italy. And then also, once they got here, found uh, work either remotely in their own countries so that they could work online or uh, were also hustling like crazy to do uh, all kinds of jobs in Italy. Italians are very social. So I remember when I first moved to Rome, I couldn't believe there was a dinner or a party on literally every night of the week. Lunedì, Monday, you go to a boxing class, but with a three month membership and going twice a week, it would cost about four euro. Martedì, Tuesday, you go to a friend's place for dinner and bake them a cake with ingredients costing about 15 euro. Mercredì, Wednesday, you buy flowers at the market and have a coffee in the piazza and chat to your local barista. That night, you go on a date of a passeggiata, a little walk and a two scoop gelato, which costs two euro. 
Jovedi, you're out to aperitivo in the square, then dinner at a restaurant with friends. So aperitivo, a glass of wine will cost you uh, three euro. Carbonara, eight euro. A drink, three euro. And dessert, tiramisu, for four euro. You then go out dancing in a club, but there is rarely a cover charge for women um, compared with other places I've lived in the world. Uh, and you ride your bicycle home at sunrise for free. Venerdì, a group of friends or a date invites you to spend the weekend on an island near Rome. Uh, you get a lift to the port, but your ferry ticket will be about 26 euro each way. You can find super cute little apartments with a view of the sea. And if you're sharing with a partner or a friend, that comes to about 20 uh, euro a head per night. So you spend two nights there cooking in the apartment with inexpensive delicious produce from the market so you're only spending what you buy for groceries at home. La Domenica, Sunday, you're back home and on the first Sunday of each month all galleries, museums, archaeological sites and museums in Italy are free so you go to visit an art gallery and then that evening you find a free jazz concert in your street which happens to me often and you grab a pizza with friends. I happen to love the margarita and it only costs five euro. La Palestra, okay the gym, you are uh probably are going to say, well, I'm on a budget, I can't afford gym uh, because you can just run obviously out in this beautiful new city that you've moved to. That's a very, uh, very sensible idea. But there is uh, the advantage of, of going to the classes because you can make friends there at the classes. So obviously paying to go and jog on a solitary treadmill with your headphones on, obviously that's not necessarily the uh, you know, super advantageous, but going to a lot of the classes, like a dance class, like a Pilates class, like a boxing class, whatever, the classes are a great place for you to be more social and start making friends and also to improve your Italian because when you have an instructor uh, up there shouting out uh, all of these all of these these phrases at you and you can see everyone else doing the moves It's a wonderful way because even if you don't catch everything that the, the, the instructor is saying you can sort of look around and deduce what what they've said they'll always try to to make you feel accepted and you know explain if you're you know you're doing the the right leg instead of the left leg Sali bene, su. Chiudi quei cavolo di pugni Guarda la mano che tocca il piede, guarda la mano che tocca il piede. Exercise is super important. When you come to Italy, look, there's a, there's a lot of delicious food and you're alone and you might be feel a bit lonely and homesick and then there's the tendency to, that you might just be eating and, and not uh, getting out and, and also exercising. And I think it's super good for your, for your mind to be moving your body and, uh, and keeping healthy and, and, and fit. Uh, so the classes generally are about uh, 10 to 15 euro per class. But if you can get a package, um, this is going to be better. There are some gyms that are you know, located outside or underneath in a basement. They're really actually quite depressing. They've got no windows uh, and they can cost as, as little as 20 euro a month. Uh, but it's up to you. I mean, look, when you, when you first arrive in a city, they will all, almost all of them will give you a free class. So that's what I like to do because often it's, it's difficult. For example, I find the Pilates classes initially are really, for me, they're not hard enough. I don't find them, I mean, they just go and everyone has a chat and no one even breaks a sweat. Uh, I like to try out the classes first and, and see how it feels. And you can absolutely go and ask them if you can do una prova. Una prova is a try. And so by doing a try, you can have a, have a taste of the gym first before you invest that money in a full three month membership. The hairdresser. Okay, so you might want a haircut or you might want to get your hair colored. Uh, this, I mean, it may also, you might be of an age where you want to cover gray. You might want to get a hair color to, to cover gray hair. And uh, in this, case you're lucky because I find that compared with other countries around the world Italy is has excellent they have excellent hairdressers some of the best in the world I think and also very reasonable prices okay so this is a price list of a hair salon in Milano these are very good prices so it will go I mean more high-end uh, salons will charge a little bit more but not much more uh, taglio e piega uomo means men's cut and dry 
taglio capelli donna it literally means uh, taglio cut capelli hair donna woman note there it says a prescindere dalle sue lunghezze which means irrespective of length piega capelli donna is a woman's blow dry or blow wave balayage is universal riflessante capelli donna okay now you see below here it says L'ideale per coprire i primi capelli bianchi. The ideal for covering the first white hairs. Uh, then we have colpi di sole. Uh, this is highlights. And uh, you see there it says corto lungo, which is short or long. And underneath it says per una chioma che urla estate. For a mane or a head of hair that cries out summer. Just a quick note about hair, because a lot of you ask uh, where, you know, what I do with my hair or what to ask for uh, when you're an Italian hairdresser. You, what you want is a piega. A piega is, oh, it's a short way of saying it, uh, is, is a blow dryer, a blow wave. And, oh my gosh, they're just the best in the world. I have tried in uh, LA, New York, Toronto, Paris, London, Sydney, even some of the best hairdressers in the world, they can't do it as well as the Italians. Literally nobody in the world does it as good as Italians. Uh, and I think it's because they're used to women with really thick hair, but also they're using this quite vintage technique. Uh, they don't, you know, Anglo-Saxon countries are obsessed with using straighteners and curling irons and GHGs, which is so bad, they just fry your hair. But in Italy, they have a little bit more of a of an old-fashioned technique which is to pull and twist the hair at the same time which overseas I've tried to show them a video of my Italian hairdresser doing it and they've said yeah yeah I know I know that and they're really upmarket hair salons so they think that they know that this technique but they don't they don't because they're when I get it done overseas uh, it lasts well two three days in humidity and rain initially I could go two weeks, good two weeks if, I, if you don't have a problem with not washing your hair, but, uh, but it's so, so durable and it makes your hair feel so glossy and it's actually healthier for your hair because you're not frying it with that heat. And uh, yeah, it's just really wonderful. But uh, the, the thing is that Italians, when you go into a hair salon, they can do it with the GHDs. Often if you're a foreigner, they'll think that's what you want. But if you ask, no, no, Solo con the, the fon, the head hair dryer and and the um, and the round brush and uh, and it's yeah. If you're looking, for example, for a general uh, cut with layers and a blow dry, uh, this would be 60 euro in a lot of places. If you're looking for a full head of foils and if you like, if you're covering grey, uh, fortunately I'm not at the stage where I need to cover grey yet. But I know that uh, for a lot of uh, women, it's uh, it's quite a uh, an expensive ordeal to, to you know be able to have to cover grey is quite complicated and you need to get foils and then have a colour as a toner as well and so this is between 150 and 200 euro um, and then you would need to do that obviously la uh, recrescita the regrowth is every three months so this is something to factor in as well if uh if if not maybe maybe you just cut your hair yourself i've certainly done that a lot of times just put my hair on a plait and snip off the end uh, so that might save you money therapy okay a lot of expats uh, struggle mentally and you can sometimes feel like a bit of a failure because there's that linguistic challenge every day and it's hard to make friends and it's hard to get a job and it's hard to you you, you had this big dream and then you finally get here and then you think oh no i'm not i'm not succeeding at this this thing that i wanted for so long don't be hard on yourself. It's it's it, it, first of all, it will get easier, but not straight away. And um, I think that if you know a lot of a lot of I know a lot of foreigners who have needed uh, therapy when they get here. Now, this for many years, I always thought, oh, therapy is such a luxury. Like, why would you know? Why would you spend money on a therapist? You could only do that if you're if you're uh, in a particularly good position financially. But now, uh, obviously, as we know, uh, mental health. Is, is actually, is a, it should be a priority for, for most of us, particularly younger uh, people who, uh, you know, can lead to some, some really sort of dangerous states of mind. And so if you find that you are needing a, a therapist or if you uh, have a tendency to, to uh, suffer from depression and anxiety, 
this might be something that you want to consider. Now, to, there are English speaking therapists and I find that the English speaking ones will generally charge 50 euro an hour. So you can decide how often you want to see them, but you might want to consider that into your budget. As I say, it can't hurt just to add in everything and just say, right, worst, worst possible case scenario. I'm alone. I can't get a job. I'm depressed, blah, blah, blah. So take you know, into account everything. And then uh, knowledge is power. And knowledge is also, I find, in the end, it's serenity because to arrive in a place and have be surprised by all these unforeseen costs is, is just a recipe for, for, for disaster. It's a recipe for making life harder for yourself. If you plan before you go, which is what I did, um, I, I think you have a, a much better shot of, of, of really establishing a long-term life here or uh, having fun, even if you have one year, like just really being able to live that year to the maximum. Uh, the gift I, I did get from my, particularly from my mother is she's, she was really wonderful in teaching us how to uh, indulge in, in in moments and and you know make sure you're not just living a life where you're always um, clinging on to, to funds and, and and never actually living life but she also taught me how to really save and how to always I guess think laterally because in fact it's a very Italian <laughs> mentality too is like the to always think there's not just there's not just one way to arrive at your at your goal at your objective you can find uh, alternate solutions for example like I remember when we were young like we would go to the cinema and you know how the the popcorn is always ludicrously expensive well we would never buy the popcorn at the cinema we would always make our own popcorn at home and then take it in the car and then and then and carry it and sneak it into the cinema each to his own I mean if you can if you can just be forgiving and understand that uh, there is no one way to live there's no right way to live and, and no one's an authority on how to live. What is the quintessential experience of any country? I mean, any country has so many layers, so many different ways to live. This is, this is my experience. You might go out, uh, you might come to Italy and have an entirely different one. But the important thing is to not, to not give up, you know. Remember also that just as I've said, there'll be unforeseen costs. There will also be unforeseen gifts that come into your, into your life, into your day. Do leave me a comment and I'll, uh, I'll try to reply to you. Thank you for watching and good luck with your dream. <laughs>